Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, for those of you who don't know and haven't been keeping up with me, I was in New York last week. Um, it was kind of a last minute thing and it was pretty exciting. Had a really good time and I met some really lovely people. Um, essentially what happened is I got an email from Hobonichi and they asked me if I wanted to attend the 2025 preview party at Yoseka Stationery Fest. And when I first read the email, <laughs> I thought it was a scam because I was like, there's no way they're emailing me. Um, but I checked with Bronte or Bronte Plans and thank God I did because it turned out that it was real, um, which was cool. And I wasn't sure if I was going to go because it was like a week's notice. <laughs> um, and I was like, well, that's implausible. Um, but my dad and I probably aren't moving this year after all because of the stuff we've had going on, which meant that I had savings. So I was talking to my dad about it and I spoke to Bronte about it too quite a bit um, and we came to the conclusion that if I'd had more time to think about it, even just a month more, I would have gone. Um, and so my dad said, well, if you have the savings and you would have gone, then you should go. Um, so I did, basically, as the too long didn't read. I was like, okay, fine, like, you're right. He basically was saying, like, you're not getting any younger. And I was like, I mean, true. <laughs> so... I was in New York last week. Um, I went for five-ish days. I lost one entire day to a horrific journey. <laughs> um, I don't know if I need to recount it, but it was super, super chaotic. If you want to hear the story, let me know and I'll include it in the next one, but it was chaos. I ended up on a six-hour coach at four in the morning. <laughs> um, so that was a lot. It, so I lost kind of a bit of a day there, um, and then I returned on Friday this week, last week, and then I immediately traveled to a wedding <laughs> um and i'm glad i did because the wedding was absolutely wonderful um really really cute and lovely um but it meant that my turnaround times were pretty fast um and i haven't been able to feel my face <clears throat> i think for like four days <laughs> so that's that um this is one of those instances where i'm filming first thing in the morning that is my morning coffee <laughs> so i might take some sips every now and then um but i really wanted to get this filmed so that i can use my stuff that i bought um so what I will do today is film a little like travel haul, it's all the stuff I bought and the ephemera that I collected and then in a couple of weeks time I'm gonna upload like a, a big vlog I guess, like a documentation of my time there. I can't tell yet how much footage I have, like I'm looking at it and I'm like okay I think it's a bit more than I thought I had but I don't know what kind of time that's gonna convert into <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, the reason I have to wait a couple of weeks is because I signed an NDA with Hobonichi, so I can't upload my, the footage until after the preview calendar ends, um, but then it will be exciting, so I think that works. It does also have the bonus benefit of giving me a little more time to process things and to get back into routine and to rest because I'm hella tired. Um, but today we'll look at some ephemera and stuff. I did this for Canada and I'm just breaking it up this time basically. Um, the first thing I got, jumping straight into it, is these garbage pail kids. <laughs> um, I got these from a sort of like um, junk secondhand comic style shop. Um, I found them by the till in a massive box and I spent 10 minutes looking through them and I think the shop assistant was getting a bit funny about it because I was taking too long. But I found these three spooky ones. So I've got Undead Jed, who is like a Frankenstein kind of one. He's stepping on a cat. Um, I've got Farah Fossil, who is like a dinosaur exhibit. And then I've got Haunted Hollis, who's like a little upside down bat kid. Um, and my dad said he remembers one of these from when he was a kid. I think it's this one. Um, apparently he used to have them, so he was pretty excited, but big fan. Um, and then, what should I show you? And then I also got this, what's Wednesday? Um, pumpkin Pez Dispenser. It's made by Pop Figures, which I don't really collect. Um, I feel like everyone had a phase of collecting enough of these to last a lifetime, but I did think that this, like, Pumpkin King from Nightmare Before Christmas was a cute Pez Dispenser. So you can expect to see that as a prop in the next few videos for Halloween. Um, I just thought it was cute and it wasn't super expensive, so I picked that up. Um... And then I also got some, because when I met Kat, so I met Bronte and I met Journaling Potato on Instagram and I also met Kat from Catherine Karras on YouTube, which I think she might be going by Katie now, in which case, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I met those three people, those three lovely people. Um, and 
Katie took me to the Pop Mart shop that she goes to, um, and I finally got some of the Universal Monsters Pop Mart figures. I had seen these when they released and I had resisted temptation, but she was telling me about them and then I was just, I was gone, I got them. Um, and here I have all the accessories that I traveled back with for them, um, but basically I got two boxes and I got the Phantom of the Opera and I got Frankenstein, which are two great ones for me, I was really really excited. And then Katie also bought one and she got Dracula, but she already had him, so I ended up with Dracula too super exciting so i have my three favorite guys all here <laughs> um frankenstein has a removable brain that can go in here obviously the phantom has a mask um and drac has like a other class of blood <laughs> which is cool so super super cute um they all sit on like theater style seats in the box um but the accessories are all tucked away so i will find somewhere to set these up kind of long term and then that will be super cute i'm really happy with them and then the other thing that I got in the Pop Mart shop, or the Blind Box shop, is this Smisky figurine. I saw this, and I've never had a Smisky figurine, <laughs> so I was like, I kind of wanted one. And I haven't actually opened this one yet, because I thought we could open it together and have a giggle. Um, that is if I can work it out. Oh, okay. Um, they glow in the dark, I think, which I just think is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, he's a sitting one. And he has a, a baby. I mean, that works really well for my desk because you can sit, but... Um, let me cut this open. Oh my god, why does he have a child? <laughs> I got two for the price of one. Does he just go on the back? Oh, he goes on, like, the side, maybe? Oh, on his head. <laughs> Okay, I have no regrets. This was a great decision. I feel really good about this. That's so funny. Oh my god. Can't wait to put that like on my shelf. Um, let me try and sit him here for the remainder of the video. He's a bit top heavy. Oh, he leans forward. And is that how the little guy stays? Yep. Okay. I mean, phenomenal. No notes. <laughs> um, some added ephemera. Great touch. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I want all of them. It's a good thing I can't find anywhere to buy them here. They did open a new Pop Mart shop in Oxford Circus, but I think it's Pop Mart exclusive rather than just being general blind boxes, so I don't know if I can get them there. It's probably a good thing if I can't. Um, what to show you next? Um, so I'll show you my ephemera, and then I have some books, but a couple of the books are on the bigger side, so we need more space. Um, so we'll do ephemera first. I don't think I want Fire or Fossil on top. She kind of weirds me out. Um... I'll show you my ephemera first and the stuff I bought at the stationery fest. The full disclosure or like the disclaimer is that I didn't buy too much at stationery fest. There were so many amazing vendors, but because I don't tend to use a lot of tape and stickers and stuff in my work or in my notebooks, I didn't want to buy it for the sake of buying it. Um, I was quite careful about how much I bought, I guess. I didn't want to buy stuff I wouldn't use, even though it was very tempting because everyone was really cool. <laughs> um, but I'll show you what I got. There's some bits in there. Um, this is also the guide, or the little booklet that came with Stationary Vest. It was cute. Um, and it's Anatomy of the Nib Monster. Um, and the illustrations are by Laura Pena, P-E-N-A. Um, so that's cool. There's a cute little Estabrook add on the back. Um, I'll show this to you for anyone interested, just in case, I don't know if someone's interested. I would go back again if I could. <laughs> um, if they do it next year, I might try and go back again maybe for it. Um, although I'm not sure how plausible that is, but it was really cute. This was the sort of map of the area. Um, and I actually, so I went to the festival and I forgot to actually go to the Yoseka shop. So that's embarrassing. So I'll have to go back at some point to be able to do that. Um, and then there were some, I think, like, how do you call it? like workshops, there were some workshops you could sign up for, 
um, and you had to pay for those separately. I didn't do any. Um, and then there was a list of like all the vendors. This one was so cool with the tapes and the wax seals. It was incredible. Um, I didn't buy anything, but I did use one of their free stickers in my notebook, so I'll show you that in a bit. Um, and then this was the map of the space itself, so that was cool. Um, there was quite a long queue on the first day. Um, apparently it calmed down by the afternoon and they were selling some additional tickets on the door, but when we got there, <laughs> there was quite a queue. Um, it was wrapping around a few blocks, so... Um, but the space is quite is a lot bigger than than this makes it look. It's it's quite it's a huge space. It's really nice. Um, and it's like a big hall, like a warehousey type hall. Um, and these were all the tables. So this side was kind of like more stationary, and then this side, like this bit, I think, was like all pens and ink almost. Um, which if you're a pen and ink person, is incredible. But I was able to sort of skim that section <laughs> because I'm not interested. Um, it does feel like a slippery slope if I start to look into it. There was also a stamp rally, so if you collected all 15 stamps you could go and you could get like a gift bag, like a prize. Um, I didn't bother <laughs> because it was so busy. Um, and it was, it was too hard to keep getting the booklet out to stamp it. Like I could have chosen to persist, but I was a bit overwhelmed by how many people were knocking other people and there were a lot of sharp elbows, <laughs> so um, I just left it basically. Um, and I am kind of losing my voice, I can feel it, so please bear with me. Um, I just have to get it done so I can open the stuff. <laughs> Everything's still in that cute sealed envelope so that I didn't have to, you know, it's still sealed. <laughs> Um, there was this spread for ephemera, but me and Katie joked, like, we're not keeping the ephemera in here. Um, but it's still a nice touch. I think it's a really cute booklet. Like, you can tell that some real care has gone into designing it. Um, so very, very cool. Hopefully it's going to happen again next year, because I think it was really neat, and I would like to see that. Um, so then moving on to my pouch. This is the same zip pouch that I took to, um, to Canada for ephemera. Um, and what I will do is just start pulling things out. So the first thing that I popped in there at the end is a Polaroid photo that Journaling Potato on Instagram took of me and Bronte walking to dinner. Um, you probably can't see it very well because it's dark, but um, that's why I received it, <laughs> because it was the spookier one. Um, so that's super cute. I think I'm gonna pin it above my desk, um, just because it's a nice memory. And like with the little walking guy, 10 out of 10. Um, and then I'll take out kind of the smaller bits. Okay. So then we can just work through the pile. So this is a mix of free bits, like scraps, <laughs> um, tags and stuff from things I bought. That's a photocopy. Um, and the um so it's scraps ephemera free stickers and stuff from different vendors um business cards in some cases the things i bought and then a couple of gifts to like envelopes of stationery from bronte and journaling potato and stuff um so we can have a look through it and i think it's gonna be super cute um i got these in the queue i don't know who retro 1951 is i haven't googled them yet but thanks <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what they are. This is for the bag I bought that you'll see featuring quite a bit in the video. Um, I, when I was by myself for the first couple of days, I was wandering around looking at stuff. Um, and I came across the Bagu shop and they had this really nice medium crescent bag by, from the collab with Colleen Estrada. Um, and it has like a silver buckle feature and it has like a patterned interior lining and it's just, it's so cute. Um, so I picked that up. <laughs> I didn't expect to, but I really fell in love with it and like I didn't regret it. I used it the whole time I was there and I traveled home with it as like my plane bag. Like I just, I really, really like it. It's super cute. So I kept the tag of that, but um, it is a bit thick. I might do that thing when you peel the top layer off if I can. Um, I feel like that doesn't always work, but I might try or I will photocopy it, which is something I've been doing a lot more of recently. It's a great way to keep ephemera or to make things thinner. Um, so. I have half of my Heathrow Rail ticket. <laughs> um, I think I was going to stick that in my book, so I had ripped one half off to put it under a photo. Um, and then I I guess I just forgot, but okay, cute. Um, I have this little spare name tag from Stationery Fest, because where is my lanyard? 
my desk is chaos right now you can't see it but it's just layers of stuff um so you got this lanyard when you went in and you could put your name on it i did a terrible job the pen wasn't working very well um and then i drew a little skull to try and fix it but you got the the lanyard with the stationary fest written on it and the little the really cute little pictures um and the biggest thing that i feel i experienced while i was there was just how nice it was to talk to other notebook people in real life i was hanging out with um jp and bronte one morning at a coffee shop we were journaling and i was talking to them about how i don't i realized i don't think i have many hobby friends like my friends are all people that i've met over my life and they're kind of like friends of circumstance that i kept and that i'm still close to but I don't think I've ever had friends that I share hobbies with before. Um, and so to just sit with them talking notebooks and understanding each other, um, I was quite emotional. Like I, I don't know, not to be a cliche, but I felt like very full of love. <laughs> so I just thought it was really cool. It was, it was really nice. Um, so there we go. It was just cool to be there. I'm really glad I went. Um, so I got a spare name tag. I considered rewriting my name because the first one was such a mess, but I kept it in the end of journaling. So that's one thing. I got this business card from Lucky Risograph. I've been following these guys on Instagram, I think, for a number of years. Um, and it was a surprise to see them at the fest because I haven't been using Instagram recently. Um, so I'm properly out of the loop. Um, but they had some really beautiful work there. They had these absolutely incredible posters. I think I filmed them. And it's just the layers and the details. I just... My Risograph is on a whole other level. Um, so you should check them out if you're not familiar. Um, yeah, I just thought it was nice. Um, and then I've got this little, I think it's a sticker, but it's like fabric. It's a Hobonichi, like, name tag almost. But it's like, um, the texture is funny. It's like woven. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I tried to photocopy it, but it came out fuzzy and grey. <laughs> so it's um, adverse to photocopiers. It's a strange little, little thing. Um, but, you know, anything for the ephemera bag is, you know, great. Um, this is from the hotel I stayed in. I took like a half the box of these, I think I filled off like a hundred. Um, I tried to lift a few and the whole thing came apart, so I was like, well... Um, I had a really nice day, it was a really nice hotel, would recommend it. Um, I really enjoyed staying in Williamsburg in Brooklyn this time. Last time I went to New York in 2020, I stayed in Manhattan, and it was nice, it was okay. Um, we had some drama with the hotel initially, but it was fine. Um, but this time I stayed in Brooklyn and it was like a 15 minute walk from Yoseka, um, and it was really nice. I really enjoyed walking around the area. It's very walkable, um, and it didn't feel as overwhelming as Manhattan, so I kind of want to go back. <laughs> um, this sticker is from, uh, there's a couple, there's a couple of things on it. Oh, the washi station. So I picked this up from the washi station desk and then the artist name is on the side here. So I'll put that on screen for you because trying to pronounce usernames is hard work. Um, I can never tell which half, which halves are the words, <laughs> um, or how the letters split up. So, um, I will put that on screen for you. It's just like, um, it's very cool. Um, it's like a ghosty woman crying. It's very folklore coded i like it <laughs> um and it's purple and this one is a fun business card i got from someone it's from do do not like sunday that's what they're what they're called do not like sunday um and it's like you apparently are meant to hold it up to your eyes and like throw it into the mirror or something and take a picture i think that's what she said i just thought it was kind of neat um there's a lot of weird bits like this that i just picked up this one like always creeping from Boss Dotty, that's what the thing says. Um, I just thought it was really fun. And then I have, um, I'll open all of these ones at the end. I got these uh, from stickers from the preview party, which was, this is like, I was really excited about this. They also gave us a gift bag that has a towel in it. I'm less excited about the towel, <laughs> but this I'm so excited about, especially because they've made the little souvenir stickers. Like, this, to me, that's everything. <laughs> the souvenir sticker. When I looked at it and I saw that, I was, I yelped a little bit, because I was like, yes, a souvenir sticker. Um, I just think it's really nice, so that's cool. Um, I picked up this beaded <laughs> taxi um, coaster from Lockwood, which is like a sort of gift souvenir style shop, but like with nicer stuff, it's cute. Um, I also got Wednesday a dog toy that's a can of LaCroix, but it says LitCroix, and it's just, I thought that was really funny, because Americans are really into LaCroix. <laughs> um, my friend was telling me about how Americans are obsessed with seltzer, like seltzer water, 
um, and I was so confused. <laughs> um, I guess it makes some degree of sense, we do kind of have that in the UK, but it's usually flavoured, and the, I think it's more like, um, I don't know. But anyway, so I got this and I got the dog toy for Wednesday. Um, I just think it's fun. I really like the taxi motif for, um, how do you call it, for souvenirs. Last time I went, I got the yellow taxi cab, like, toy from CVS. Um, and I'm excited to add this one to my collection. Um, this is a business card from a jewellery shop that Bronte and JP took me to on my last morning. Um, I'll show you the necklace I made. It was expensive, but it was really cool, and because the night before I had added up how much I had spent while there, and I'd been so careful that it was nowhere near as much as I thought once I converted it. So, because it was my last morning, I did kind of go all out for this. Um, let me move these so you can see it properly. So what you do is you, you'll see it in the video, I filmed a lot of it, but you go and then there's like trays, it's like pick and mix but for jewellery, so then you can put together your own charm jewellery. Um, so I made a necklace, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep these charms on this necklace or if I'm going to like cannibalise it, um, but I've got this string of like sort of purple toned pearls, and then I've got a purpley star, I've got a sandwich, um, a key, this like 3D berry, which is amazing. This is the one, I was going to make a silver necklace because I've been kind of thinking about going silver recently, but I saw this berry and it didn't come in silver and this was, I was like, well, I have to build it around the berry. <laughs> um, I got this New York because it's like a souvenir necklace, I guess. I just want to be able to remember when and how it happened. Um, so there's a little New York. And then I have an eye, and it's like a picto pictograph thingy, it's like a picture. And then I have a lucky horseshoe as well. So a lot of charms, it was kind of pricey, but um, I don't have any regrets. I think this is a really cool souvenir to come away with. Um, and because I didn't spend much elsewhere, um, the most I spent apart from this was on books. So um, I just, I think it's really cool and kind of spooky. And I'm excited to see what I can do with it. I might cannibalize the charms and make like keychains for my notebooks or something. Or I might keep it as a necklace, I need to try it on properly, I haven't done that yet. Um, but either way, I'm really excited that we got to do that together. So that was from a shop called Haricot Ver. Um, it came in this little bag, and then the business card is this, which is cute with the New York motifs. <clears throat> the little back of it, and then it also came in a box that was nice with the eye and I have the receipt in there somewhere too and that is also cool <laughs> so really nice presentation and everything I was really into that um so that was cool bringing all the ephemera back over um so I had I'm gonna look at this one this is a birthday card I got for my dad because it's his birthday at the end of the week um I just thought it was funny because he kept going on about like is it called like lox bagels are like with the salmon and the cream cheese and he just kept going on about it before i left so i got that for him and the brand is called seltzer what is it with you people on seltzer um these are stickers that katie gave me katherine Karras. um i'm really excited about them they're super cute um it was really good to meet her a spooky friend these are exciting with the coffee cup with the bat on it 10 out of 10 um looking forward to these and the pigeons really nice yeah really nice um this one is from bronte i guess i'll open these ones at the end still it makes sense to go through the loose ephemera first i think oh look here's the rest of my um got some postcards i think that's my boarding pass we don't want that oh, don't want to dox myself <laughs> um so where did we get to? The postcards. I got some postcards from the bookshop. I had a second one somewhere um, of an old New York. So this is Manhattan, oh no, West 42nd Street, looking west from 7th Avenue near Times Square in 1937. Um, so that's quite cool. I think it's neat. And then I have these yellow stickers that Bronte gave me. I've already used two. I couldn't resist. I was pulling stuff together yesterday and I was trying not to use any of the new stuff so I could show it to you. Um, but I caved and did use some of the yellow stickers, <laughs> so, um, here are some receipts. I've got one from the bookshop, and then this one is from Haricot Ver. Um, 
I've been photocopying these so that they don't fade and the same thing for my cinema tickets because one of the days I was there it was like 40, no it wasn't 40, it was like 34 degrees here and I wasn't coping very well after my ordeal, <laughs> my bad journey. Um, I was struggling to adapt to the heat the first couple of days and so I was like I'm gonna cope in the only way that I know how and that is to double feature at the nearest independent cinema. Um, so I went to Nighthawk Cinema and it was so good, really recommend it, I'm really glad I went. I saw two films. So long legs and I saw twisters and I enjoyed both. I like twisters more. Long legs kind of freaked me out. I think I enjoyed the first half more than the second half. Um, some of it was just um, a lot. <laughs> it was creepy. And then I think there were some gaps maybe in the narrative, but like the vibe just carried it through and just made it so eerie. And I was like, oh, um, I'm glad I saw Twisters last because I would not want to walk home alone after watching Long Legs. <laughs> um, but I've been photocopying these too so that they'll last and they won't fade. Um, this is again from LCN Design Studio. That's the one I mentioned earlier that make the wax seals and stuff and they're really cool. Didn't buy anything because there was a queue and people were getting antsy in the queue. <laughs> um, and we did get to the front of the queue, I think Katie bought some bits from them, and they're really cool, but I was I was trying to look through stuff and I was just too, too overwhelmed. Um, but their work is really beautiful, so hopefully if I go next year I'll see them again and I can actually get some stuff. Um, this one is a sheet of Oracle stickers by Death P. Sun and the Washi Station. Um, I just think they're beautiful. I've been following this artist online for a long, long time, like 10 plus years. Um, so it was cool to see their work. Um, and their little tarot cards, oracle cards. So that's exciting. Um, this is a freebie from a top drawer. It was just some funny cards they had. This one is about the importance of analog tools. I haven't read it yet, but I will. Um, I think it sounds like it could be good, <laughs> but unconfirmed, but cute. There were some other cards too, but I threw them away, I think, because there were too, there was too many things. <laughs> um, and I was trying to pack my suitcase to come back, and it was just a lot going on. Um, here's my other postcard. Cute, huh? This one is Times Square, I think. Yeah, looking north in 1954. So, just thought that was nice. I really like it when they have the older postcards. Um, especially if they don't have silly fonts on them and stuff, it's just nice. This one is a free sticker from Galen Leverco. Um, didn't buy anything, but I did have a nice look around. The, um, lady who was talking to us and running the store alongside someone else was really nice. Um, and I picked up a free sticker. Um, some more receipts on here, uh, from Lockwood. That's like gift shop I mentioned. And I think that's all that's in there. <laughs> it's just one receipt. Um, at some point I must have made an attempt to collect my receipts and then I just didn't. Um, so then what I have left is the gifts from my friends and the bits I bought, which as you can see, I bought these two and this one. So I only bought three, three things. Um, and these two are from Bronte and JP. So we can do these ones first. I'm excited to finally open them. <laughs> Yesterday I wanted to use them so bad. Um, so this stuff is from oh, the little sticker, this stuff is from, let me try and find, they must have a business card, yeah, here we go, Mugo Bunny, <laughs> hashtag Mugo Haul, um, and I did haul from the shop because they had some really beautiful stuff. So this is the little freebie sticker you get, it's like a circus ticket, which is fun. I got these flowers, I think this was a freebie, the flowers. Um, I didn't choose these, so I think they must be. Um, but you get some flowers, which are always nice, to be fair. Um, I bought these vintage-style space stickers, which are super cute. Um, it was this alien, I saw this alien, and I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and this, like, little planet, it's, like, bubbly, it kind of looks like, um, almost like a bacteria or something, and it just reminds me of, like, Katamari Damacy. So I got that. Um, I got these gummy worms. Um, just a big fan of gummy worms, and I like that they kind of like are transparent and like the colors are really glowy. I don't know how well you can see them, but I liked that. Halloween stickers. Every time Katie and I saw Halloween stickers, we were so excited. Um, so I got these little guys. Big fan of like the mummy and like the little Frankenstein's. I just think so good. Um, excited. These are some like star stickers. They're like almost like the deco stickers, you know, that the K-pop girlies use on their pictures. Um, and they come in like the funny twisty strips of like ribbon. 
um, but you can't see it because it's all just in there. I think it's really neat the way it's just a big picture of, of like, a, like a night sky. Um, and then you have to peel them up from in there and it's just, um, it's really cool. So I thought that was neat. These ones that are like plasticine, plasticine clay stickers. Um, again, just a really big fan. I love these bunnies and the, oh my God, I can't remember what this is called. The little, the dessert anyway. Um, I just, I really like the vibe of that. So there we go. <clears throat> that's what I got from that shop. Um, so that's my first little haul. And then I got some from Paper Plant Co. It has a little sticker. And big shout out to the shops that seal with extra stickers so that you can keep them as scraps. <laughs> um, and I got this New York souvenir sticker because I will always look out for souvenir stickers. It's nice, it's like um, soft to the touch, like the Hobonichi ones are, so that's cool. Um, oh, this is the little freebie. And then I got this little bat cat thing, which is fun. Um, and they have like a dog mascot who's really funny. His name is Vincent, 10 out of 10. Oh, because they have a shop in Los Angeles, that's cool. Um, so there we go, that's what I got from that shop. And then, the last one that I bought with the cute tape is from, oh, this is really nice. That's not the name of the shop, I don't think, but it's a really nice stamp. I'm gonna try and cut that stamp out of the paper. And I guess I just got two things. I think this shop was stocking from a couple of different places, but they both say TPL stationery on them, um, which I think is the stockist. So that makes some sense. I got this pack because of the Egyptian gods, thought that was cool, but also this little devil guy with his cloak. I just thought that was a nice touch. And then I also like the dinosaur skeleton. Um, and they're quite nice in the size and color. So I picked those up. And then I also got these paperclip stickers because neat. <laughs> I liked those. Um, and then last but not least, I guess I'm going to open my really cute snail mail post from Bronte and JP. Um, and this is so cute. I'm going to keep this for my notebook. <laughs> um, I haven't opened this yet because I was like, I have to be able to film it so that I can have the documentation of it before I ruin it. Um, even just the, the envelope, I think it's from, maybe from Sticky Club. I feel like I recognize it and it just has like the tarot cats and it's so it's so nice with like the foiling like this whole thing is just I'm excited um so I think Bronte said she gave me like a lot of samples from her stationery collection which is cool because again this isn't the kind of stuff I buy for myself oh but look at these Bronte thank you if you're watching <laughs> I'm so excited um, uh, the spooky tapes are from Killer Views top two. So the top two are from Killer Views and Yohaku and Salem Creative, I think that's what it says. That's so cool. I love the skulls. Actually, I love all of them because this one has like knives and scissors, which is cool. And then this one with like the like foiled splatters is also just fantastic. And then I like this one because it's pale and thin, which is more like what I use. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and these. These are also great. Nice. <laughs> and the keys. Oh my god, Bronte, how did you do this so on brand for me? <laughs> um, these are fantastic. I love these a lot. These are really good. I don't want to end up with like a stationary addiction. Like it's bad enough that I buy the notebooks, but I can't afford to fall in a hole buying the supplies. Um, I assume this is a little... Oh, it's just my name. Also fantastic. I'm going to put that on the front of my notebook, actually. I thought maybe for a minute it was a note, but I think I'm going to put it on my notebook. I like the A. Um, oh, the letters. I like that. And the dots. And some other letters and numbers. Oh. 10 out of 10. <laughs> That's really exciting. Oh, see, I've never had stationary friends and the whole thing is just, it's a lot. It's exciting. Um, and then this one is from JP. 
And there's some nice stuff in here too by the looks of it. These really nice dot stickers. That's my that's my brand, my dot stickers. It's everything. <laughs> that's what everyone associates with me. This is nice. I like this flower on the cat. And this one. This one is like a little bit shiny. Really good. Oh. A guide for the stickers. And a really cute bookmark. That's nice. A letterpress bookmark. Oh, that flower. So good. There's a letterpress shop in Bath and I always go in to look at the stuff they have because it's so nice. Oh, wow. What is that? For Token. From Museum of Art Gallery. Really nice. The details in there. I feel like I need to hold it two centimeters from my face to be able to see it properly. It's amazing. Wow. And this too, this really nice paper. It's beautiful. And if you can see my hands shaking, please pretend you can't. <laughs> um, it's amazing. Really nice. I love with the like the ink text. It's good. Thank you, JP, as well. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, hopefully I'm gonna hang out with them again like fairly soon. I think we talked about meeting up in London because they both live in London. Um, so you might see more of that. That would be very cool. Um yeah, so that's everything. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, my books, my books. Sorry. Almost forgot the books. So we need a bit more space. I think this should be good. Um, so I found a bookshop in Brooklyn one evening called Spoonbill and Sugar Town. Um, and I picked up some books. I didn't really mean to, but I kept finding cool things. And then I was like, well... You can't always find covers and books as cool as this in the UK, it can be harder. Um, so I picked a couple up. Um, and this one is called The Body Harvest by Michael J. Seidlinger, I think is how you would say that. Um, my dad said he'd heard of it, so I guess it's something people have heard of. <laughs> um, I actually hadn't, but it sounds cool. It's about these two people who meet and they're both obsessed with like chasing illness and like getting fevers. Um, I read the blurb and I was like, this sounds bananas as a premise, but also I was like kind of into it. And I thought it might be a good sort of like october like coming into autumn read, I guess. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to reading that. It sounds interesting. Um, and it's called The Body Harvest, if you want to find the blurb for that online. Um, it's like a soft matte sort of glossy, not glossy, like it's a matte velvety touch to it, which is nice. Um, so excited for that one. I also picked up the pocketbook of Emily Dickinson um, because I just finished reading the Black Bird Oracle, which is the most recent installment in the All Souls series. Um, and in that she talks about Emily Dickinson quite a bit. So I found myself interested to read more. Um, and this is a really nice little, little edition. So I picked that up. Um, it's just, um, it's nice. And I haven't read much Emily Dickinson, so pick that one up. And then I got this book called Seeing Making Room for Thought. It's by a couple of authors who collaborated. I haven't opened it yet, but there was an open copy in the bookshop and I thought it was really cool. It's about, I guess, being a creative. Um, let's try and have a look. There we go. Yes. <laughs> um, I really like publications like this when they're like half zine, half book. I mean, you know, that's the area where I like to be in. <laughs> so um, and like when it's all very like DIY feeling, I just I think it's so neat. Um, I just I saw this and I was like, I mean, <laughs> big fan, like burn CDs, not books. I mean, I just think there's a lot covered in here, like topic wise, um, and it's beautifully presented. So, I mean, what was I supposed to do? I had no choice. <laughs> um, I saw this and I knew it was game over. And then um, I picked this one up first and then I found the body harvest or whatever it's called. And then I found Emily Dickinson. And then because of that, I went back for this coffee table book of Yoshitomo Nara. 
Um, I have been a fan of Yoshitomo Nara for a number of years. There's photos of me at an exhibition in London when I was like 17, so we're talking 10 years ago. <laughs> um, when I saw this, I was like, ooh, because I feel like this kind of book is what I find harder to find in the UK. I'm sure you definitely can, um, but if you're in like a normal bookshop, like a Waterstones or something, I can't find them. Um, this one, when I saw it, and then there was a copy that was open, had a quick flick through, and I was like, oh my god. Um, and I, I said I was umming and ahhing, and then I figured if I buy a couple of other books, then it makes sense to buy this one too. So, no regrets whatsoever. Um, and it's... oh, sorry, there's hair. Um, there's some articles and, like, interviews in English and some in Japanese. I think maybe it's in both most of the way through, which is a big help, obviously. Um, but it's just a compilation of bits. I'll try and flick through and show you some. Like, I'm obsessed with when he makes the sheds, the little houses, and, like, the mini studios. Like, when I saw that stuff as a kid, I was like, it was a lot for me. <laughs> um, I thought it was really cool. When I saw the exhibition, I got to see the teacup dogs with the fountain. Um, and that was just, it's astounding. I just, I love it. Um, Yoshitomo Nara is also a big Ramones fan, so I feel like we have that binding us. Um, I just, oh man. It's just really good, huh? <laughs> I'm really glad to own this book. I've been looking to buy Yoshitomo Nara art book for a number of years, to be honest with you. Um, and to finally have found one that's a good size um, and is a good selection of work, I'm um, very glad. This was tucked inside. Um, I don't know what it is. It's probably like a mail order form for something, but I can't read it. Look, here's his record collection. Good. Very good. I remember watching a documentary about him and he just kept talking about how he just wanted to listen to noisy music and I've never found anything more relatable in my life. Um, there's a little ticket for the book in here. This was sticking out, I had to tuck it away for traveling. But it's really cute. This is the name of the book, The Beginning Place. So, I like that. I might try and put that in my notebook. Um, and then a mail order. Oh, it's for the company who make the book. So there are other ones. There's one for Saul Later. I never know how to say his surname, but I am familiar with him. Yeah, looks like they make a few books, which is nice because this is a really beautiful one. So I might look into that, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's nice because it's a compilation of works and interviews and stuff. Um, and I just think I can't wait to read him talking about music. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's just, I'm, I can't wait, I can't wait to read it, can't wait to dig into those words, it's just, big fan, I'm a big fan, so that's the last thing I bought, was my Yoshitomo Nara book, finally. Um, okay, I think that's everything I bought, um, I am currently in A6s, which is a big sh surprise, I think, for most people, for me too, but when I went to the preview party, I was looking at all the stuff for 2025, I got to see the full lineup, and I was thinking about how... Often, for me personally, I think some of the designs can be overwhelming in A5, but in A6 I feel like they work just right. I don't know if this is true or not, but it feels almost like they're designed for A6 and then adapted for A5. If you, oh god. If you know what I mean, that's kind of the feeling I get, because they just seem to work slightly better in A6. Um, I also find that when they have, a, like, a, when they diversify the range, so when they have one artist and they do multiple designs, so like one A5, one A6, pencil boards for example, um, I find that I like the A6 a bit more, <clears throat> so I kind of was thinking about it over the weekend while I was at the wedding, and when I came home I realised I had these packed up from <laughs> December last year when I was in A6. Um, so I figured since I already own them and there's no money spent, doesn't hurt to play around a bit. So I've been kind of compiling my little souvenir pages in here to see if I can make it work, and the way that I've gone about it is by printing my photos smaller than I normally would. So when I print them this size, my print setting is 16 on a page, <laughs> um, and they're a lot smaller. Um, I just wanted to see if I could make it work, I guess. None of this is like true ephemera stuck down, apart from the one sticker. Everything else is just photocopied, so if I need to recreate it in a bigger book, I can. Um, but I was thinking also about how my most successful period by far was my era <laughs> of like 11 completed Loistrom 1917 notebooks. 
and about how if they hadn't betrayed me with the grid, <laughs> um, I probably never would have stopped using them. So I think, obviously, I could make the size work if I tried hard enough, um, but we'll see, I guess. I just think it's very manageable, isn't it? That's always the appeal. It's the portability and how manageable it feels. Um, so anyway, I filled my couple of days. Here's with Bronte and JP. This one is Kat. <laughs> um, and this one is my other friend, Sarah. Um, and it's just, it's cute. So, yeah, I've been kind of filling those out. I did that yesterday. That's what I wanted to use stickers for. And then I'm using the day three with it still, because I just don't have enough room with only one um, as kind of like an overflow space. So here's my stuff from the cinema and my photocopy tickets and the photos I took there. Um, left a blank page for stationery first because all my ephemera was packed away. And then I scanned my necklace and this is a key ring I bought too. Um, or photocopied, not scanned. I photocopied my necklace and I stuck some photos down. Um, but we'll see how we go. At this point in the year, I'm like, it's okay. Like, I just want to have a play around and see how I feel. Um, and I'm not really interested in feeling bad about it. I already had these books waiting, so I was like, well, let's just see. Um, so that is everything, I think, that I bought in New York. The only things missing are food. I got some birthday cake flavoured Oreos, which I think you can buy here, but, um, I saw them and I picked them up. Um, I bought a lot of Hershey's chocolate for Luke because he really likes it. And here, you can only seem to find, like, the cookies and cream flavour, which is really icky. He just wanted the plain flavour, so I got him a lot of that. I also got a giant bag of Reese's pumpkin pieces because you can't buy those in a pack in the UK. You can only buy them individually, as far as I've seen. And they're expensive, they're like 150 for one. <laughs> but I bought a bag of them for like $4, so that's cool. Um, and that, I think, is everything. My desk is so chaotic, it's so messy. <laughs> but thankfully, now that I've opened it all, I can just sort through it this afternoon, pull some bits together. Um, and I will look forward to sharing that other video with you in a couple of weeks. The next one will probably be the Crocs decorating, just FYI. You all said you wanted to see it, and now I will deliver. <laughs> um, they arrived just before I left, um, so I'm ready to do that, and then I can start swimming on Wednesday. Okay, that is everything. Thank you for watching. If you watched, if you were interested, um, I feel very grateful and lucky that I got to go to New York so short notice. I'm really glad I had the savings. Um, and I'm really glad to have met Katie and Bronte and JP. Um, big thank you to all three of you if you're watching, because it was really lovely to just meet people and be able to click, sort of, immediately and talk about cool things, and I never thought I would meet any of them, but especially not Katie. <laughs> so it's just cool to have been able to do it. Um, I am exhausted though, so I will go and sleep for a bit, I think, and drink my coffee. I hope you all have a lovely weekend and I will see you next time.